us, it's the box, it's the box. Woe unto us! Who will deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods? These are the gods that smote the Egyptians and all the plagues in the wilderness. And they were all looking, thinking the power of God had come. But then, like church, you wait on the power of God. <laughs> and it don't show up. Just some great theologian giving an encouraging word. But the power of God, it never comes. No deliverance. No healing. Oh, maybe, you know, once every, once in a while, once a year or something. Somebody gets healed of something, somebody heals something. Here's something. That's because the Bible says, albeit I do not this unto you, but unto my glory. Anywhere where you'll have a gathering of saints, God's going to do something for himself, but that is far below what should be going on. That's just the glory of God. You got to get a hold of that. You got to be, you got to get a hold of that. Verse 10, and the Philistines fought. Now the Philistines looked and they went, well, there's no lightnings, there's no thunder, there's no plagues, there's no... And after a while they went, well, we don't understand it either. It's supposed to be a bunch of power in that magic box, but nothing's happening. And once the enemy comes and challenges you, and you go, ah, oh, greater is he who is in me. And then the enemy goes, well, you weren't talking like that when you gave away your tithe. You weren't talking like that when you were full of depression. You weren't talking like that when you didn't want to pray, when we got you where you wouldn't pray anymore, where we got you where you're late for church all the time, where we got you with all your enthusiasm gone, where we got you where you're just walking around like this. You weren't saying it then. And once they see that you're a quitter and not a fighter, that you're an excuse maker, I mean, once a demon can get you to make an excuse and a compromise, he will lead you into full compromise in every area of your life. And you go, no. But the answer will be yes. So the Philistines rose up and fought. And Israel, the people of God, were smitten. And all of them ran away in terror and fear. And there was a great slaughter. And there fell 30,000 people of God. And the magic box was taken by people who weren't of God. Your power is taken away by things that are not of God, which are demons. Mm -hmm. They take away your faith, which is your power. They take away your prayer, which is your power. They take away your reading the word of God, which is your power through knowledge and the truth that makes you free. They take all of that stuff away. Why? Because they're so powerful. No, the Bible is true. Greater is he who is in you. The Bible is true if you use faith. But if it's not, it's just a bunch of words. You can't say words out of the Bible. Lord, I claim. No. No. You can't. It's good to stand upon a word, but you've got to do deliverance to remove the hindering thing. You've got to remove the blocking thing. A lot of people go, well, I read that. I read that book you got back there, James, Breaking the Curses of Poverty. And like, I read that book. Yeah. So what? I bet you Satan's read that book too. Every demon's looked at that book. What's he got in here? Am I in there? <laughs> What's that mean? It's just a book. This is just a book. Nothing special about that. They went to a printer. Maybe the guy wasn't even saved who printed this book. How do we know? It's just a book. And nothing in there can help you. Zero. Unless you mix that with faith and action. If you don't. <laughs> What's that to you? This is where the Pharisees got it all wrong. They knew the word, but there was no faith mixed with the word. There was no power that was mixed with that. And they came and they took, they took the magic box. Verse 18. And it came to pass. Oh, verse 17. The messenger answered and said, Israel ran away before the demon possessed people. And there's been a great slaughter. And the two sons, Hopni and Phineas, your boys are dead. Your rebellious boys are dead. And the ark of God is taken. 
And when the man of God heard that, he fell backwards in his chair and broke his neck. Because God holds the priest of the home responsible for the way that you raise up your children. Without a covenant, the ark is just pieces of wood, some gold, some stone, a couple of tree branches in there that once budded when there was covenant with God. <laughs> with covenant, you could pick up, you could take a branch off a tree and you can make an axe head swim. You can pick up a stick and you can part the Red Sea. You can do a lot of that with covenant of God. But without covenant, it's just an old stick. It ain't going to do nothing. It can't do anything without covenant. 1 Samuel 4, verse 22. Hmm. And she said... The glory is departed from Israel, for the ark of God is taken. No, the truth is the ark was taken a long time before it was physically taken. The, because it's all about covenant. It's just a box sitting there. It's not about a box. She says, because the ark is taken, the glory of God is gone. You don't need a box to have the glory of God. You need covenant. 5-2. Then they took it over to the house of Dagon. They took the things of God over to the house of Satan. And this is the same thing that happened in Babylon. It said all the treasures are held in places of darkness, the dungeons of darkness. And this is exactly what's happened to all of our gifts. <laughs> Through covenant breaking with God, from curses that have come into our life, there is no more power even though there's faith in Jesus Christ. Where's the healing? Where's the, where's the great thing? When God came to Gideon, he said, Mighty man of God, through the angel. And he said, well, if it's God, where's all the miracles? He was doubtful because he hadn't seen it. God said, oh, why is the miracles gone? And then he started to name everything, all the Ten Commandments that had been broken, all the occult involvement, all the stuff. He began to name all the reasons, and they went. And they had to go back and take it by force. What did God raise up? He raised up a warrior, a man with military knowledge, a man who was willing to go out and fight even against great resistance and even fight against his own fear. Well, turn it over again, turn it over again. I want it wet on the top and dry on the bottom, dry on the bottom, wet on the top. And He had to deal with all of his own fears, all of his own stuff before he could even get going to help other people. Today, the pastors don't want to deal with their own stuff. They just want to go start helping other people and then pretty soon... They're caught up in religion. They're caught up in manipulation. They're caught up in all this stuff. Verse 3. And when they of Ashdod arose early in the morning, behold, Dagon, the demon, had fallen upon his face of the earth before the ark of God. Why? Because there's power in the magic box? No, because God was insulted. And God is trying to show his people, don't be afraid of these demons. I have authority over these demons. I have power over these demons. He's trying to show them this. It's not about the people's faith because they're still out of faith. They're completely demoralized and defeated. They're not worth anything in the kingdom of God. And Dagon, and they took Dagon and set him back in his place again. See, Satan's always going to go, okay, well, we got one little defeat. God showed us. I mean, you see how many times God has come and moved in this service and people jumped up healed. It's right here. Every single thing God did, every one of these things, and Satan goes, no. It don't matter what Satan said. The answer is yes. The stuff that's in the blue here is in the last week and a half. The stuff that's in the red is the week before that. Are we talking about brain cancer, uterus cancer? All kinds of stuff. And all this stuff was the weeks and the weeks before that. Satan can say whatever he wants. This is why we put this thing up here, to shove it in his face like a spiritual cream pie. You've got to get a hold of the truth. That's what God is really doing. But we have to be involved. And when they rose up early in the morning, behold, Dagon was fell down again. Satan's always going to come back and try and put his stuff back on you. You go and you get a little deliverance. You, get, you see God do something. I mean, 
How in the world, this is a question for you, how in the world can you ha not have faith? How in the world can you be depressed? How in the world can you feel defeated right now when right in your face is everything right there that God is currently doing? It has to be a demon. And God can come in and show you and put it right in your face. You can sit there and see your husband with a demon coming out and go, I don't know, I still don't quite agree with this, and I'm still not so sure about I don't. But the Holy Spirit is moving right in your face. Right in your very face and in your own flesh. Because husband and wife are one flesh. But still you can go, and think you don't have a demon. Are you crazy? <laughs> Behold, Dagon was fall upon his face to the ground, and the ark of the Lord, and the head of Dagon, and both of his palms of his hands were cut off and lay in. Why? This is what happened with Jezebel. He said, the dogs are going to come and eat her, but God left a testimony. What was the testimony? That the top of her head and the palms of her hands and the lower part of her feet was laying on the ground, but everything else was gone. Why? It was a testimony of her evil works that she had done for Satan with the members of her body. And the same thing right here. Same thing right here. Dagon had hands. He had feet. But it wasn't enough to help. <laughs> Therefore, the priests of Dagon, nor anyone else there, they were terrified. Terrified. They didn't even want to go back in there but the hand of the Lord was upon them of Ashdod, and he destroyed them, and he smote them with emrods, which is tumors, cysts, and boils, all over, all over their bodies. So we know where all of this stuff comes from, don't we? <laughs> and when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, The ark of God, the magic box! shall not abide with us, for his hand is sore upon us and upon Dagon our God. See, God's going, I'm not going to be mocked. My people might not do something about this, but I am. And that's a sad place, my friend, where God has to take things in his own hands when he put it in yours. Mm -hmm. Trusted you with it. <laughs> and they sent therefore and gathered all the lords of the Philistines and said, what shall we do with the box? And they answered, Get rid of it. Take it away. And it was so that after they carried it about. Now they're carrying it about right now. How can they do that? See, when there was covenant with the, ma with the box, it wasn't a magic box then. It was a covenant box. See, the things of God can become the things of Satan. Serpent on the pole became the Nehushtan. Still on the pole right now. Go to the pharmacy. Get one of those little sick bracelets. It has the serpent. On the pole, you're not supposed to have that. I'm bringing a curse in your life. <laughs> and it was so that after they carried it about, the hand of God was against the city with a very great destruction. And he smote the city, the men in the city, both small and great, and they had emeralds in their secret parts. All over their sexual organs, they were attacked. Hmm. Wow. Wow. But still, they can handle the box. But when there's covenant, you can't touch the box. Why? Because the anointing's there. If you touch the anointing, you bring a death curse upon yourself. You bring a tax upon yourself if you touch the anointing. This is why you've got to be very careful about talking about people who operate in the power of God. You've got to be very careful because you think you're, you're attacking them. You think you're touching them. You're not. You're touching God's little private little thing. The anointing belongs to God, not to you, not to a man. It belongs to God. No one dares touch that. If you start touching that thing, you're messing with God's stuff. Huh. Wow. <laughs> okay. Therefore, they said, we have got to get rid of this thing. <laughs> Look at verse six and, f 6 and 4. Well, it was there for seven months. Verse 1. It was there for seven months. They called the diviners, all of their magic people, and they said, what should we do with the ark of God? Tell us what we should do. And the demonic false prophets said, verse 4, 
What shall be the trespass offering which we shall return to God? And they answered, Give him five golden tumors and five golden mice, according to the number of the lords of the Philistines. For one plague was on you and all upon the lords. Probably talking about bubonic plague here. Wherefore you shall make images of your Imrods, idolatry, images of your mice that are attacking the land, and you shall give glory unto this God. Peradventure, he will lighten his hand from off of you and from off of your gods. <laughs> Wherefore then do you harden your hearts as the Egyptians and the Pharaoh harden their hearts? Then God would not let the people go, and they departed? Yeah, they did. Therefore, make a new cart. Make two milch kine, two milk, two milk cows. Take two milk cows on which there had come no yoke and tie the kine of the cart and bring their calves home. Bring their calves home from them. <laughs> now, what's going on here? We're going into a parable. Into a parable here. The calves, 1 Samuel 6 and 7, verses 10, says that the calves removed from a mother brings a curse. Mm -hmm. And this is representative of the curse by what measure you met out. See, what's, what's happened is God has been, they've, God's people, his children, have been led away from their father. And this is part of the parable that's going on. Look at verse 12. So they put the ark upon a cart and the mice and the gold of the images. And the kine took the straight way and took to the way of Beth Shemesh and went along the high way. What do they call the Christians before they call them Christians? The way. The way. The way. Which way? The high way. And they went lowing as they went, calling out unto God and heading back to God. And they refused to turn to the right or the left. They've gotten off track and out of the way, but now they're going back into the way to renew covenant with God. Are you getting this? Yes. And the lords of the Philistines went after them onto the border. When you come back, into the things of God, even the ungodly ones will start to look, have a second look at you. You can't tell people that they need God when your own ungodly behavior from them knowing you. Now the demon worshipers are even behind this thing and they're following along the things of God. You see the turning here? By bringing the thing back. Look at verse 17. And these are the golden emeralds which the Philistines returned for a trespass offering unto the Lord for Ashdod and the golden mice. Hmm. Wow. 1 Samuel 7, verse 1. And the men of kirjoth Jerem. now the thing has started to come back into the place, into the place of God, came and fetched up the ark of the Lord, and they brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill. And they sanctified Eleazar, his son, to keep the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass while the oak ark abode there, that the time was long, for it was 20 years, that all the house of Israel lamented of the Lord. They took a step in God, and then they compromised again. Because the ark was supposed to be brought back to its rightful place. And this is where we can get with God. We can seek just enough deliverance until things start to go, okay, well, the attacks are starting to lighten up right now, and then we stop. And that's where the church is today. They've come just enough in God where they can squeak by and eke by, but they're still standing in the sand. And most of the church has never even crossed over the Valley of Moab. They've never gotten their feet wet in the Jordan River. They've never really been tested. Meanwhile, they're being lied to by the lullaby of Satan that we don't have to be tested. We'll never be tested. We're all going to be raptured up before any kind of test ever comes. And they're tricked and fooled. 
and it's not going to end up it's not going to end up being like that. 7 verse 3. And Samuel spoke unto all the house of Israel, saying, If you do return to God with all your hearts, because they haven't done it with all their hearts, they've taken part of the things of God in, but left it out where it's not really a blessing unto them. They just go, well, we got, we have Jesus as our Lord. Well, what about the gospel? What about the promises? No, we have Jesus as our Lord. No, not as your Lord, as your Savior. When you bring Jesus as your Lord, under his Lordship, you'll do the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. And now the man of correction comes, if you will return unto the Lord with all of your heart, all of your heart, then put away the strange gods out of your town. Stop the fear. Get your house in order. Throw away the demon things out of your house. Get it all out and quit making excuses. Burn the Harry Potter books. Throw away the Harry Potter movies. Get the Pokemon cards out of your house. Get rid of all these things. But don't say, Jesus is my Lord, when you're not going to do what he says while making excuses, this, that, and the other thing. If you have demon things in your house, you have demons in your house. Get it away from amongst you. Lock yourself away from that computer. Put a blocker on there. You can't look at that porno no more. You're not, you might think you're sneaking around doing something. You're not. You're not getting away with nothing. God sees everything. Satan sees everything. And Satan's claiming rights. Prepare your heart. This is where the church is off track. Prepare your heart for the things of God. Humble yourself. Serve him only. And then he will what? Then he will deliver you. Deliverance requires heart preparation. A lot of people come in here and go, no, 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 I'm not so, so sure. And You know, my wife told me that she's going to divorce me if I don't get some deliverance and I don't go down. And I don't go down there, but I don't have a demon, so, I, but I don't want a divorce because she does my laundry. And so, <laughs> so I'm going to go down there and then they come down and they sit here like this in church. Like that. Full of demons, completely full of demons. All these young boys, so full of pride, just tried to commit suicide last week. But sitting back there going, ah, oh, he's a liar, and everything he's saying is wrong, and this is wrong, and that's wrong, and this is wrong, and I don't agree with, <laughs> well, you agreed with suicide. That's right. Is this condemnation? No, this is just reality, my friend. If your life is completely out of whack, if you're sneaking out the window at night to go, you know, you're out of whack. Meanwhile, you're sitting in judgment of the preacher. Sitting in judgment of the people of the church. There's got to be a demon. There has to be a demon. If you can sit in church like this, while the power of God's moving, I mean, even if you don't quite want something, you'd at least think you'd be going, wow, God. Because you've been calling out for that for your whole life. But now when it comes, you're going, eh. What do you think God thinks like that when you're sitting in your chair going like, yeah, and Jesus is looking at your heart? Like, you go, well, Jesus isn't here. Oh, well, then how come things are happening? <coughs> no, he's looking straight at you. Mm -hmm. And he's going, why can't you humble your heart? Mm -hmm. And you go, because I don't have a demon. <laughs> <laughs> Face the monster under the bed, my friend. Then the children of Israel did put away all of their demon stuff, and they began to serve the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel, and we will go pray for you now. Now you're ready. And they gathered together to Mizpah. They drew water. They poured it before the Lord. And everybody said, We have sinned before God. That's our problem. Everybody finally took their own responsibility for what had been, been going on. Verse 12. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Here too has the Lord helped us. So the Philistines were subdued. You see that? Deliverance began to come when they finally humbled themselves and laid their stuff down. Verse, verse 8 and 1. But now Samuel starts to get out of... Step himself. Look at verse 3. His sons walked not in his ways and turned aside after lucre and took bribes and perverted the judgment. My friend, it is not 
enough that you serve God. It is not enough that you're a pastor. It's not enough that you're an apostle or you're a teacher. You got to deal with your stuff. Or your stuff's going to deal with you. You might think, oh, I love the Lord, but what does your life show? What does your family look like? Amen. What's going on in your job? How do you act at your job? Right. We have to get deliverance from all areas for the Lord's hand to really be to really be upon us and really to be able to to bless us. Hmm? Okay. Go to First Chronicles 13, 1. We're almost we're almost there. This is a little longer than most things, but that's okay. Well, we're almost there. First Chronicles 13, verse 1. Now David went to his church, and all of his church people, and all the leaders, and David said unto the congregation, the church people, What do you think? Should we bring that magic box down here? And everybody went, Yeah! Hallelujah! Bring it here! Well, if it seems good unto you, and it be of the Lord, and if it be of the Lord of God, then let's send, and let's go get it. Verse 3, and let us bring it again, the ark of our God, to us. It's time for it to come back. And all the people in the church said, yeah. And it was right in the eyes of the people in church. That's where it's at. Whatever is right in the eyes of the people in church is what we're going to do. You know, even in the big churches, they always take a sampling. You start heading out the door and they go, excuse me, would you mind just doing this questionnaire? Yep. And they fill out a questionnaire. What is it you liked about the service today? What is it you didn't like about the service today? And they get it, and then they all go back, and they have these professional pollsters, and they all figure out how to do the perfect message that pleases the most people. The Bible says in the last days they will bring to themselves teachers having itchy ears desiring what they want to hear. And they will turn the gospel of Jesus Christ into fairy tales. Yeah. And that's what it is right now. Jesus, the little fairy, sprinkling love dust over the congregation. He better not try and be that line of Judah thing. Because that line of Judah thing ain't going to work around here, Jesus. <laughs> Verse 6. So David went up and all Israel to Baal. Ah. I mean, this is supposed to be a town of God, but it's named after Satan. How many, you're in God, but how many Satan names do you have? Stupid, moron, loser. The angry one, the hateful one, the resentful one. Oh, be careful around her. She gets offended so easy. She'll get in your face. But going to church on Sunday, what kind of name they got on you? What kind of label has Satan put up on you? What kind of sickness? What kind of disease? What kind of problem has he put the label on you to where if we ask you, well, what's wrong with you? You go, I have. No, Satan has. So they went up to Israel to Baalah, up to Israel, to Satan town. You see that? That is Kirjof Jerem, which belonged to Judah, belonged to God, but Satan was still there, to bring up thence the ark of God, the Lord, that dwells between the two cherubim whose name is called upon it, and they carried the ark of God in a new cart. And out of the house of Benadab, Uzzah, and Ohio, drove the cart. Now, this can't work. This can't work. This is what church is trying to do. They're trying to do ungodly things and things that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can go and have your stress reduction yoga class in church. You can go to the seminar of how to live with and cope with your fear. How's, why would you want to learn to learn to live and cope with a demon? How to, you know, I got all these people that keep knocking on my door, all these Jehovah Witness ladies, and they have all these books, and they're trying to put in my face and going, excuse me, sir, we're here to show you how, how you can learn to deal with your anger. I said, well, I know how to deal with anger. They go, you do? You've read this book? I said, no, I read the other book. <laughs> and, uh, and it says to cast it out because it's a demonic spirit. And you look at them, and they go. Yeah. <laughs> and they leave. 
they're manifesting demons as they start to preach the word of God. And pretty soon they're going, well, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go. I said, well, you came here to talk about God. Let's talk about God. This is exciting. I'm starting to enjoy this. And they're going, <laughs> and they're shuffling off down the street like freaky eyed. But you're just giving the truth of God's word. I'm not challenging them. I'm teaching. Huh? This is, but you know, these principalities, these powers, these things, these demons, they'll, they react to the truth for those people who've been, who've been in error. And they carry the ark. Now you can't do that. You can't put it on a cart. It has to be carried by staves, by poles, only by the sons of Korath. It can't be carried by just anybody. And now they've gone down there in the spirit of religion. You cannot have a church service without Luke 4, 18. Without preaching deliverance and setting free captives, healing and delivering the bruised and the broken, bringing physical healing to the body of Christ, and preaching to the lost. You have to do all four things to meet the ecclesiastical law. But they don't want to do that. And instead, with a shout, with a shaking of the tambourine, and they all believe that they're doing a righteous thing in God because we're worshipers. Well, we're not called to do deliverance, James. We're a worshiping church. There's no such thing as that. There's no scripture for a worshiping church. Now, all churches have to worship. That ushers in the presence of God. Elijah said, bring forth the minstrels that the hand of God shall rest upon me, and then he would minister. Of course, we have to worship, but Satan will always take it to the extreme. No. You're a worshiping, rebellious church. And we just got to call it like that. And when we say that, people go, ah, no, you're so extreme. I'm not extreme. God's extreme. God's, God's the extreme one. Rebellion. Rebellion is witchcraft, my friend. You know, we have to identify these areas where we got, us, got out of step with God. Clearly, the Bible says you cannot use a cart. It's in Exodus 25, 14 through 15. It can only be carried by the sons of Kohath. Numbers 4, 4 through 15, and 7 through 9. They put the name of God upon it, but they're doing ungodly things. And because of that, a man of God is being carried on a little cart, being pulled by cows, can't be pulled by cows, has to be carried by staves. They're doing things in the name of God, but doing it in an ungodly way. And pretty soon, the box starts to go, mm, 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 and it starts to move back towards the back of the cart. But the problem is this. It's not the magic box anymore. It's the anointed box now. Because people have come back to covenant by their words. And now when you're in covenant, that's where you've got to be careful. Really careful. I mean, Ananias and Sapphira. When the move of God begins to happen, you start telling one lie. Rob God during revival. Rob God of a tithe during revival. You fall over dead. <gasps> How dare you? I'm not cursing you. It's a word of God. It's a word of God. And he went out like this. He started looking at it and goes, well, God can't take care of his own stuff. And that's what you do. When you start touching the anointing, when you start coming against people who are anointed, and the anointing is upon their lives, and you go, well, God can't control it, so I, I'll take care of this. And somebody's got to speak up about this, don't they? And you start touching it, and you start knocking it, and you start mocking, and you start talking trash, and now you're touching covenant. Because if a person doesn't have covenant with God, regardless of what you think is out of step with their life, if they don't have covenant, there ain't going to be no power. There ain't going to be no power. And so you come and touch that thing, and he fell over dead. And what does it say? It says, and that made David angry. Yeah. Why did that make David angry? Because David had come to the place in his life where he said, that's good enough. Yeah. I know God wants this and that. and I know the Bible says we should cast out demons, but this is good enough. And once we start doing that, and we start making these compromises with the gospel, pretty soon there is no gospel. And the good news is, you can get saved and go to heaven. No, that's not the good news. It's a lie from hell. The good news is that's step number one. But there's still three other steps. That's the real good news. But if people don't tell you all the good news, how are you going to know what it really is? I just have a couple more scriptures. 1 
Judges Chronicles. Okay. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and he smote him because he put his hand to the ark, and therefore he died with God before the Philistines could handle it. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened. Why? Because they were in magic, so magic box, what's that going to do? But when the anointing is there, that's where the power is. I mean, the Bible says, so God gave them up to their own ways. Look at Romans 1. God gave them a reprobate mind and gave them over to their own ways. You can go to a place with God where the Holy Spirit has tried to convict you so many times, but you won't learn. You still want to crawl out the window. You still want to sneak. You still want to try and get away with this and get away with that. Put yourself in a place of temptation until finally you do it. I mean, if you find yourself being convicted over something that's going on and you haven't quite done it yet, you're going to do it. Get yourself out. Get yourself out of that thing. Because later on you know what they're going to do. Once the demon convinces you to do it, now he'll condemn you for doing it. You know it. You know it. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's go to the end. First Chronicles 13, verse... Well, we did that. 9 through 11. And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. My friend, when we do something wrong and God allows an attack to come against us, don't get angry at God. Amen. All that stuff is already written down. Come to the place of going, okay, I screwed up. Yeah. That's the blood of Jesus. You know, we have the blood of Jesus. It's not like you screwed up and now there's no way out. You just turn back. That's all. That's all God ever asked for. Just turn around. Pick yourself up. Satan will go, ah, oh, look at you. you. You really screwed up and you're never going to be worth nothing to God and you've defiled yourself so much and... Now God's just out to kill you. Oh, don't fall for that. That's, I mean, if you're getting that out of the talk I'm doing today, you got the wrong idea. It's not anything like that. I'm trying to encourage you with the truth and pointing out some stuff, but, but, all, but all God is saying is, look, okay, you screwed up. Next time, let's just go on track and retry it again. You go to God and you go, look, I, I screwed up. Give me another shot. And God will go, okay. Let's go rebuild another clay tablets for you. And you get another, yeah. and you get another shot. I mean, that's really what it is. Crazy. Okay. Now the question is. I told you that all that looking for that Ark of the Covenant has been useless because I got it, and a lot of people don't know that I do have it. I've been entrusted by God. I've been entrusted with God to have this thing, and it's time to finally reveal it. Are you ready? Are you sure? Are you sure? Okay. I'll give you one more scripture and then I'll show you the box. I'll show you the, the ark. Jeremiah 3.16. You sitting on the end of your chair? I know you are. Don't, don't act like you're not. I know you are. <laughs> Jeremiah 3. 16. And it shall come to pass when you are multiplied and increased in the land in those days, says the Lord, they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come into your mind anymore. Neither shall they remember it. Neither shall they visit it. Neither shall that be done any more. So, first of all, I mean, I wasn't even looking and I found it. So I got grace. Are you ready? You ready? You sure? All right. All right. <laughs> I want to go over to Revelations eleven. <laughs> Verse Crazy. 
19. Here it is. I told you I found it. And the temple of God was opened in heaven. And there was seen in his temple the ark of the testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. It's in heaven. So it can't be found on earth except for here. Here's where it can be found. If all that we give you praise and we give you glory and we lift you up on high. You are worthy of praise, Daddy. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask forgiveness for anything we or our family ever said or did on both sides of our family all the way back to the root of the tree of Adam that got us out of step with our covenant with God. Father, we renounce covenant breaking and making excuses for our stuff and we just stand in our rightful place and say, hey, it was us. It was us. And we renounce finger pointing and blame shifting. And Father, we just take responsibility. We take accountability. Because we know that's what you love. And we put it under the blood of Jesus. All of it. We renounce breaking the Ten Commandments. Our family breaking the Ten Commandments. God visiting the sins of the family on the third and fourth generations and so forth. We just confess that as sin, Father. We stand in the rightful place with our family to confess that as sin right now. And whatever it is, Father, that has gotten us out of step, we renounce putting our hands on anointings, touching anointings, which belongs to the Lord, as if that's just a small and casual thing. We know, Father, that's just a jewel in your crown, Amen. part of your personal treasures. We renounce that, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. We renounce all the sneaky little things that we're still doing. We just put it under the blood. Put it completely under the blood. Under the blood, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We know 1 John 1 and 9 says the Lord is quick to forgive. And Father, we forgive. We forgive everybody. No more excuses about unforgiveness. Not just because it could get in the way of our salvation, but because it's the right thing to do. Amen. And we don't want to be tormented. Amen. Amen. We renounce that, Father. We release everybody of everything. Every single thing out there, we just release it and help us do that from our heart, Father. From our heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. And whatever it is today that the Lord is judging, we bind the strong men today in Jesus' name that we spoil their house and we spoil their goods. We bind the enemy today in the name of Jesus. We command the gatekeepers, the doorkeepers, and all such things to be bound and put out of the way in Jesus' name. We bind all these spirits together. We bind all the ruling spirits. We kick the pillars down, holding up the house in there of the enemy in Jesus' name. Everything that leaves today we command to be sent to the pit of hell. We declare that sickness, disease, aches, and pains is a total lie, a total absolute lie. All of these attacks is a total complete lie. We don't believe it. We believe the Word of God. We come against it right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is the Lord is working on, whatever it is that He is judging today, that He wants to help us get free from. We take authority over it right now in the name of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus over the enemy right now. We put a wall of the blood of Jesus at his back to force him up. We command that wall to start rising up, push him right out of the door he came in by. In the mighty name of Jesus, we come against it right now in Jesus' name. Whatever it is the Lord is judging, I command you in the name of Jesus that you will release God's people right now. In the name of Jesus, that you have to come out. 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 Every sickness, I bind you and I command you to come out. 
Everything causing sickness. Everything causing sickness. Everything ca causing diseases. Everything bringing in aches and pains in Jesus' name. I command you that you have to come out. 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 Spirit of infirmity, I command you to come out. In Jesus' name, I ask you, Father, send blood of Jesus. Healing. Healing ministering angels, Father, to come and bind all spirits of infirmity and remove them out today. In the name of Jesus, to be gone right now. In Jesus' name, we send it all back to hell from where it came from. I command you to come out. You have to come out. You have to come out. All the joint pain. Joint pain, back pain, hip pain, knee pain, knee trouble, hip trouble. I command you to come out. I command you to come out. I command you to come out. Stabbing pains in the back in the name of Jesus. I command that you have to come out. 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 Backache, come out. Backache, come out. Back trouble in the name of Jesus. I command that you have to come out. 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 Trouble in the feet. Trouble in the hands. I command you to come out. I command you to come out. I command you to come out. That back trouble that comes and goes for seemingly no reason. I call out the reason in the name of Jesus and I command you to come out. I command you to come out. I command you to come out. All the trouble in the neck and in the shoulders in the name of Jesus. We command that trouble to come out. Command you to come out. Trouble hiding in the joints. All the joint pain in Jesus name. You have to come out. 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 All liver trouble, liver trouble, liver disease in the name of Jesus. I bind you. I command you to come out. Everything hiding in the liver, hiding in the kidneys. In Jesus' name, you have to come out. 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 All the lung problems, breathing trouble, hay fever, sinus trouble, sinus headache. Come out right now in Jesus' name. You have to come out. All, 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 every allergy, every allergy, every allergy, you have to come out. 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 Every demon that is attacking, any curse that is attacking the endocrinological system uh, or the immunity system, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out. I command you to come out. Everything attacking the immunity system, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Everything attacking your immunity system in the name of Jesus is trying to set you up for organ trouble, sickness and disease, all gland troubles in the name of Jesus. Every plan to kill you early, bring some deadly disease on you, I command it has to go. 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 You have to come out. You have to come out. You have to come out. All rebellion. All the rebellion in your family. In the name of Jesus, we command you to come out. Rebellion to the head of the house in Jesus' name. We command you to come out. We command you to come out. We command you to come out. You have to come out. All the rebellion. All the rebellion. Selfishness, selfishness, I command you in the name of Jesus that you have to come out. I command you, you have to come out. 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 All false accusation, all insecurity, all jealousy, all envy. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. You have to come out. You have to come out. You have to come out. All the doubt and all the unbelief that is holding you back from signs, wonders, and miracles. I command that to come out right now. You have to come out. All the frustration the enemy has brought in your life to bring doubt and unbelief about your healing. In the name of Jesus, I command you to come out. I command you to come out. I call out, the, call out whatever curse is working that brings one thing after the other. One thing after the other. I command you to come out. The non-stop attack. The non-stop attack. I command you in the name of Jesus that you have to come out. 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 All the cramps. Cramps. I command you to come out. I command you to come out. I command you to come out. I command you in the name of Jesus. You have to come out. You have to come out. All muscle trouble and cramps. In the name of Jesus, you have to come out. 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 All the fear about the future. Fear about something that's coming up in your future. In the name of Jesus. Fear of tests. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Insecurity. Come out. Insecurity. Insecurity in Jesus' name. Insecurity that blocks your boldness and your faith in the name of Jesus. You have to come out. 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 Everything trying to get you out of church. I call out the enemy's plan to get you to come out of church and run away. Run away again in Jesus' name. All escape. All escape. You have to come out. 
Every kind of escape in the name of Jesus, every kind of addiction, every kind of behavior that you cannot stop, that you know you should stop, in the name of Jesus, making excuses, I command you come out. I command you come out. Every eating disorder, every eating disorder, every eating disorder, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out. I command you to come out. I command you to come out. I command you have to come out. You have to come out. You have to come out. All the rejection. Rejection by your mother, rejection by your father, rejection by your family and friends. In the name of Jesus, you have to come out. 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 Getting the colds, getting flus in Jesus' name. Everything hiding in the blood. All blood diseases. Everything hiding in your blood. Everything coming down the bloodline. All bloodline curses in the name of Jesus. You have to come out. 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 All skin diseases and skin disorders in the name of Jesus. We command you to come out. Everything afflicting and attacking the skin in the name of Jesus. You have to come out. 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 Have to come out. All rashes. All rashes. Tumor cysts and boils. Come out. Come out. Come out. Fungus. Rashes in Jesus' name. I command you to come out. I command you to come out. Every itchy thing. Every itchy thing, every scratchy thing, in Jesus' name, you have to come out. 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 We call out all generational murder in your family line, in the name of Jesus. All the violence out of your family, in Jesus' name. You have to come out. 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 Headaches, come out. Everything that brings any kind of headaches, migraine headaches, sinus headaches, Come out, come out. Every kind of headache there is, I command it to come out. Everything that brings headaches in the name of Jesus, you have to come out. You have to come out. Weakness, come out. Weakness, weakness, dizziness, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out in the name of Jesus. You have to come out. 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 Trouble in the prostate, come out in Jesus' name. All of it comes out. All of it comes out. All of it comes out. All gynecological diseases and attacks. In Jesus' name, all trouble in the breast, breast cancers, all tumors, lumps, and boils, I command you to come out. I command you to come out. Curse of cancer running in your family line, I command you to come out. I command you to come out. I command you in the name of Jesus, you have to come out. You have to come out. You have to come out. All of the occult involvement in your family, in Jesus' name, offended, being offended and angry, easy. In the name of Jesus, you have to come out. 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 All the fear, fear, worry, doubt, unbelief, come out. Mistrust, distrust, I command you to come out. I command you to come out. I command you to come out. Everything tormenting your mind and tormenting your body in the name of Jesus. Everything causing you no rest and no peace in the name of Jesus. You have to come out. You have to come out. You have to come out. You have to come out continually thinking back, continually looking back, continually looking back over your shoulder in Jesus' name. Can't remember, can't let the past go. In the name of Jesus, you have to come out. 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 Whatever the Lord is naming today, whatever it is, whatever it is. I call it verse 33. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, I will remove out of the book of life. What? Well, here we are again, back at that unforgiveness kind of idea, aren't we? Whomsoever is in sin will be removed from the book of life. And you think, oh my God. I mean, there's so many sins in the world. Yeah, there is. We all slip. Of course we do. Every pastor in the world has some kind of thing. Including me. But we have to be quick to go and just renounce it. Ask forgiveness. And if you find yourself doing something over and over and over, you got to go in for deliverance, man. you got to try and get free from this thing so that you can finally stop it. If, you, if your family's out of whack, if the house out of whack, if there's no rest, if there's no peace, you need some deliverance. you got to quit making excuses and blaming everybody else. Because chances are, if we took you apart and put you in a hotel room, you wouldn't sleep well. You wouldn't have no rest over there. You wouldn't have no peace over there. You might for one day go, thank God I got rid of that fool. <laughs> but already you're showing the fruits of a demon. Yeah. Bible says, call no one a fool. Raka. Call no one raka unless you be in danger of hellfire. If you're sitting there calling all these names on people, my friend, you got something, you got something going on. 34 verse 1. And the Lord said to Moses, 
Okay, you smash my stuff. Now, Moses, he started making excuses. It's the people. The people just make me so angry. No, he already murdered somebody. Yeah. When nobody, yes. none of this God stuff was even going on. That's right. And what did he do to escape it? He ran off and hid. He used the spirit of escape, ran off and hid, instead of de deal with his problems. Mm -hmm. Like so many people in the church do. You can hide with your computer, you can hide with your cell phone, you can hide in the drugs, hide in the alcohol, hide in the pornography, hide in the eating, overeating. There's all kinds of different ways to go and escape without dealing with, without dealing with your issue, without dealing with your thing. And then after a while, you calm down, you want to come back. And God's going, well, okay, we'll try it again. Okay, tell you what, go find a couple more rocks. We'll write a new one. Yeah. Huh? Okay, well, this is the grace of God. There is grace of God. But after a while, I mean, how many times can you smash on stones? And in the end, he smashed on a stone once too many times, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Because he failed to learn his lesson. He just kept smashing, 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 and eventually, you know, God gave him grace, 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 and eventually God went, that's it. That's it. Because we're, you know... We're getting ready to move into a new area here. You used to use that stick. So you got really good at using a stick. But eventually, you know, he came up to the promised land and God says, we're not going to use sticks no more. We're going to speak a thing and have it, have it come to pass. And I need a guy who can speak. He said, go speak to the rock. And he went and tried to do the old way. You have to be able to move forward in a new direction with God when God brings a new anointing into your life. And if you cannot move forward, where one door closes, another one's going to open up. He's just going to use somebody else if you can't move into that new area. And if you can't move into that new area, you've got to get some deliverance from the thing that's stopping you because it was his anger, his rage that stopped him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. And he hit that stick because he was in a rage about everybody else. All over again, he was yelling, those rebels and these rebels. Joshua 6, get a hold of it, help us Jesus, help us, Joshua 6, verse 3, you shall compass the city, all you men of war, and go round about the city one time, and you will do this for six days. Do you see that God is very specific when he gives you a recipe of what to do yes. and how to accomplish something? And the seven priests shall bear the ark, seven trumpets of the horns, ram's horns, seventh day you shall compass the city seven times. And what if they did it six? The priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people will shout. What if they didn't shout? With a great shout. What if it wasn't a great shout? What if it was a whisper? And the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Wow. Why? Why did that happen? Because they got the box, man. They got the box. That's the way they think today. Why are they looking for the box? It's pointless to look at it. I got it. But why are they out there looking for the box? Because they believe that if they can get a hold of that box, they're going to have some great power. Nothing to be able to stand in your way. But it's not just the box. The box is only a teeny tiny, eensy weensy little part of this whole thing. There's all these instructions of everything that everybody has to do, but there's something even more important here that nobody is, e is even seeing right here. What's that? Covenant. Right. Everything is about covenant with God. If you don't have power in your life, it's because somehow you've broken covenant with God. If you don't have the anointing that you want in your life, it's because somehow you've broken that covenant. If you don't have the gifts, because you have the same Holy Spirit in you that raised Jesus from the dead. If you can't tap in on that, it's because you don't have covenant with God.
Because without covenant, there is, there, is no, there is no power with God. And you have to start analyzing things that are bringing you out of covenant with God and deal with those things in your life as scary and as freaky as that is going to be because it ain't going to come easy. It's very hard to trust God with your money. It's very hard to trust God against the spirit of fear. It's very hard to trust God for a lot of things. It's very hard. That's the test. It's not, it's hard because it's hard. It's, it's part of the test. Once you pass these tests, okay, it becomes easy. It becomes easy to move forward and trust next time, but you've got to get through it. 1 Samuel 2, verse 12. Now the sons of Eli were the sons of Belial. What does that mean? This will be known as the sons and daughters of perdition in the New Testament now. It means that they are completely controlled in areas of de with demons. And there's plenty of people within the church who have areas of their lives that are completely controlled by demons. The anger, the hatred, the rage.